Hey, hey, kitties, another video from the hard drive whore. Uh, 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 I mean, the angry photographer. Since all your data is st stored on hard drives, which it shouldn't be, but if it is, it better be on more than three or four hard drives and in multiple locations, but you're still screwed because if you store your data on a hard drive perfectly on the most expensive, best hard drive money can buy, and you stick it in your fireproof, you know, uh, a uh, fuzzy cotton tail line safe, you are screwed. Magnetic depolarization will occur within four to seven years. The data will be lost and will be unretrievable. You're screwed, screwed, screwed. Oh, well, I just stored this hard, my data on this hard drive. I'm going to stick it in the safe and it's still going to be good and protected because it's in fireproof vault. No! You're screwed. You're screwed. You're screwed. Some of the more common reasons for hard drives to fail of which there are countless. Infant mortality, I'll talk about that in a second. Bad parking, heads impacting. Okay, it's where the heads actually park incorrectly. There's a little, we can call this a parking bay right over here where actually the heads park themselves when uh, you turn off your computer and the hard drives park themselves. Bad parking. By the way, when the heads park and unpark, they're scratching potentially across that drive. Only takes a couple little minute particles to screw the whole thing up and then you're screwed! Sudden impact. We all know what that is. Hard drives jarred. Heads can bounce. Electrical surge, electrostatic surge, uh, controller board failure, right on the back here. This is an old hard drive, obviously uh, hard drive controller boards less and more in a current hard drive. Doesn't make any difference, still the same technology. Better technology, but still prone to high failure rate. I've replaced enough of them. Bearing motor failure. What do you think is driving that spindle? And by the way, if you have a bad motor, and it gets out of balance, it could actually twitch and do that number to the inertia of the weight of the platters even though they're aluminum. And what that causes is head crash. Okay, bearing motor failure, board failure, hard drive controller board failure. Bad sectors, you know what that is. Infant mortality, there's an actually a, a premise uh, behind a hard drive failure and it's infant mortality. There's actually a super high failure rate due to possible manufacturing defects when hard drives are created, which means it sounds illogical at first. If you think about it, it makes perfect sense. It's basically the same way a human child is. Like back in the old days, it's like a baby was really, really prone to die back in the Middle Ages. Like In other words, if it made it to two years old, then it was okay. But babies were really, really prone to failure early on. Same thing with hard drives. Due to any slight manufacturing defect in manufacture. In other words, if your hard drive makes it out of six months of use, you know you're pretty much safe you know, for the next few years. As a general rule, not specifically, as a general rule. Uh, hard a very high level of infant mortality is actually trackable on a chart here where we have here we have failure rate extremely high this is infant mortality and as the drive goes on a long time the failure rate drops substantially as time increases we have increasing failure rate two types of hard drives those that are dead and those that will die every hard drive is plotting in the middle of the night to shaft you and screw your data every one of them you think I hate hard drives? I got over 200 of them. I love hard drives, but I know how bad and how evil they are. Can't think of how many thousands of people are like, oh, I just lost 10 years of my work on my hard drives. Like, oh, you mean on your computer? Oh, my computer failed, and I found out my backup, uh, my backup hard drive had failed too. You know, I stored it away for a few years, and all the data on it's corrupt. You're screwed. Infant mortality, very high early on. It basically dissipates after six months. Phew! So much stuff to talk about hard drives. The point is, where I ask, you know, where am I going to start boring the snot out of you? And probably, some of you are probably going, Oh, you've already done it! Which is, okay, whatever. This is about photography. Everything now is digital photography. Digital is about storing, protecting your data. Oh great, I just spent a $10,000 vacation last year going to Thailand taking tons of pictures. You know, I spent uh, $20,000 on that trip and yet I protected all my data on a $60 hard drive for which I had no backup to. Ah! Here's something else you like. Not only are the right heads 
the reed right heads writhing at 10 nanometers instead of 100. Remember, a human hair is only is 75,000 nanometers thick. There's a new thing. It's a logarithmic uh, software uh, that's built into reading uh, the response, the binary data on the disk. It's called PRML. It means partial response maximum likelihood that what the scientists have done in their great wisdom is let's let's make this hard drive ahead right right as close to this platter as possible that way we can jam more data on it because the closer the head is to the hard drive platter it means the smaller the space for the binary data to be written to okay oh well, that's a good thing we can jam more data onto the hard drive Okay, great. So now what that does is it creates tighter domains of magnetic polarity. So that creates issue in reading and writing data. But basically, in, as it pertains to uh, reading data, they developed a uh, algorithm called PRML. Basically just software. It means that it is a fancy word for saying that the data is so friggin tight on a hard drive platter that there is a program which basically intelligently guesses as to the correct binary data being read. Oh yes, this is true folks. PRML, partial response my maximum likelihood, which is just a fancy way of saying the data is so closely packed that we had to develop a neat little scientific algorithm to make a high likelihood response to guessing what the data is that was just read. Okay, these are the heads, here's the armature, here's the voice coil. I think I've gone over the hard drives enough as far as what's here. Talking about the parking ramp. What we have here is the server grade hard drive. It's your armature coil. By the way, here are two. Let me show you how strong these little suckers are. As I just told you in the prior video, the new uh, hard drive uh, neodymium iron borons are polarized not only top to bottom, but left to right, and that creates an issue. It makes them more precise, but it makes them more prone to failure. See, not only polarized top to bottom, but polarized looking edge on, left to right. So here we have four polaric sectors. In other words, we got two magnets that's in one piece of neodymium iron. By the way, these are ceramic. Okay, these are not metal. It is ceramic. Let's show you how strong these little suckers are. Let's do this. Let's get my pliers out here. It's like, well, what does this have to do with anything? I don't know. Everybody likes seeing this. Ready? One, two. Ooh. It will actually pinch the shit out of you. That's, you should have made a lot louder noise than that. Really powerful neodymium iron borons. N52 gauss, by the way. Um, point being, here's the platters. Here's the current hard drive platters of today. This is what your data is on. Now you've learned that uh, it is only writing, by the way, the, uh, the average uh, roughness of these, like I said, is one nanometer in roughness on these hard drive platters, current ones. The head is only writing 10 nanometers above that platter. You see this hard drive, this uh, server grade hard drive? It literally spun every bit of that data off there. That's why there's clear glass there. You can kind of see a little bit of the silver uh, uh, read-write layer still left in the center there where the heads didn't actually reach because it's constantly doing this number. The heads literally rode the data right off of the sucker. The inside of it was very dirty. That was the data everywhere scattered as very, very fine particularized dust inside that hard drive. Uh, coercivity, they've actually improved coercivity on uh, current hard drives like on these platters uh, by having a carbon overcoat and a cobalt with platinum and nickel and it's spread it on a chromium which is a grain surface replaced magnetic layer, it helps reduce signal noise improved coercivity, underneath that is chromium and underneath that is aluminum still extremely easy, I mean just nothing will destroy your data, just next to nothing so easy to ruin your data um, like I said, I love the piss out of hard drives, but if you think your data is safe on a hard drive, you are screwed. Two types of hard drives, those that have screwed you and those that will screw you. By the way, this is the current world's thinnest hard drive. It is a single platter. I've got a few of these. They're made by Seagate. It's five millimeters thick, or you could say five millimeters thin. Uh, right here, I've actually got a plastic coated aluminum layer to protect the uh, hard drive controller board against electrostatic shock. But this is the world's thinnest hard drive. 
that can be purchased. It is a 500 uh, gigabyte uh, Seagate and it is a single platter hard drive. I thought you would think that was interesting. Most current hard drives today are two platter, uh, two platter uh, one terabyte or 1.5 terabyte hard drives but uh, the uh, theoretical limit of packing in data closer has been superseded by Seagate by doing something insane which I won't go into now I can actually see those hard drives failing a year from now they've come up with a new technology to actually pack the data in closer by coming up with uh, some new software BS but I think I've gone over hard drives enough and I don't know if there's anything else I wanted to show you as so far as uh, as hard drives um, yeah, I was actually going to show you as I had a few seconds here that you need to consider your archival data plan. By the way, this is a magnetic field finder. You think this is probably pretty interesting. Like I said this particular uh, current hard drive magnet has polarity on both top to bottom and left to right. That way you can actually see it here top to bottom. So I have there, there. It's a magnetic uh, field finder. So I have green here, but if I flip it over here, I have a red. Actually, the Chinese actually created this field finder incorrectly. So there, there, and inverse polarity there and there. So even though they made the current hard drive neodymium iron borons better and uh, have more accuracy, they're more prone, alas, and unfortunately due to the quad polar nature of their creation from the magnetizer coils, to depolarizing. I've actually seen some of the older ones of these and the dielectric inertial plane top to bottom and left and right that creates a cross right here in the center uh, is uh, faded and the Gauss reading from the Gauss meter is uh, nowhere near as high as what it should be which should be a uh, N52 Gauss neodymium iron boron. Great improvement. They can improve the accuracy of something but have decreased its life. It's kind of like giving a child steroids. Like, oh, it's great for a few years, but it'll, it'll die early. That's basically what they've done in our disposable society. So I hope you have a working understanding of how a hard drive works. And like I said, there's one thing that everybody that loves hard drives, this expert on the hard drives will agree to, is that the more you know how they work and what makes them up, the more you are shocked that they work at all and the more you are extremely shocked that they don't fail a lot more often than they do. I mean, really, really, really. Now, uh, Seagate and uh, Hitachi uh, have started uh, actually uh, pressure sealing their hard drives to reduce the heat and friction, which actually causes the destruction of your hard drive. They've sucked the air out, they create a vacuum seal, and they actually insert helium, so they're actually called helium drives. Seagate and Hitachi is getting into that. They actually uh, totally vacuum seal these and they suck out the air and then they inject helium since uh, air and nitrogen actually is part of the heating process of uh, the uh, actuator arm, you know, doing this number, you know, endlessly faster than this just all the freaking day long. They've uh, removed a lot of that by reducing this actuator arm impacting nitrogen and oxygen and regular air inside of a normal hard drive and replaced it with helium. So that's a neat little improvement, but it doesn't really contribute to the longevity of hard drives. Um, so, that's probably too much information about hard drives, but uh, now you know, and uh, now that you know, be afraid! Be very afraid! It's time to buy some optical data, uh, blank media to uh, back up uh, your really important crap and start sticking it on private websites. Okay? Okay? Hard drives, while you sleep, are plotting to destroy your data. You think, think that's a joke? It's not.